So we're back from our winter expedition and the catastrophic failure, yep, was unexpected, but it actually highlighted that uh, you need to be prepared and also answered one problem I've been struggling with for a couple of years. Since we bought the Ocker, we've had problems with being able to change gears. It's always been a bit difficult and sometimes almost impossible to get uh, the gear correctly. I've adjusted all the linkages, I've replaced rose joints and nothing I did was ever 100% perfect where I felt satisfied I'd, I'd got it. And it was one of the biggest bugbears I had with this truck was the fact that the gears were always a bit difficult to, to change and it made me not like driving it too much. However, the catastrophic failure probably answered what was going wrong. My Ock is one of the very first ones and it doesn't have a um, securing screw to stop the, the gear stick from swiveling itself, which I got, got used to, but it was always really difficult selecting gears. Um, they're going in quite well now. When I bought the truck, I had, had it inspected and had some repairs done. One was to replace the clutch. And the first trip, it sort of worked pretty well until just towards the end when we started noticing that the gears were getting a bit difficult to change. And that's when I started mucking around with linkages. So these bits of leather, I believe, masked a very serious problem for quite some time. So the Ocker is a cable driven clutch. When you depress the uh, clutch lever, it operates this rod here, which operates a pivot point and in turn pulls a cable which you can just see in through there. So underneath the ocker you can see the mechanism for lever there which operates the clutch it causes the clutch plate to separate from the flywheel and reduce or take drive away from the gearbox. The flexible joint up there, the rubber booter joint, is the termination of where the, the cable comes out and then goes up to this arm. This arm, call it the clutch actuator arm, is the bit that's covered up by that that leather casing and that leather casing is there to stop debris going into the clutch mechanism inside the gearbox or the bell housing and this is what broke that that arm was actually attached up here while I'm mucking around with this what happened with the clutch well over the years it, it got harder and harder to change gears and while we were away last time it sort of twigged that the reason I couldn't change gears wasn't because there was a fault with the adjustment of the linkages it was because the clutch wasn't releasing properly and I didn't notice this while we were driving or anything but it was only when I was trying to change gears so then I looked at how that could be affected and there's a couple of clevis joints that I was able to make some adjustments to and instantly I did that I had improvement in gear changes to be where it was a really nice thing to drive and then over a period of a couple of hours it would get worse again and I'd repeat the adjustment and I couldn't twig why this kept changing. And it got to the point where we pulled over on the side of the road because um, I heard some big noises uh, and the clutch had stopped working and I couldn't change gears. And I made one final adjustment and um, it was the best I could do. So we drove 80 k's into Meriden and just prior to leaving Meriden, it failed again to the point where I had no clutch movement at all, the pedal was on the ground got out underneath and the little clutch adjuster arm which had hit, been hidden by the leather uh, casing had actually broken and I suspect what was happening was that over a period of time it has been um, breaking and you can see evidence of rust in the shear marks so that it had been broken for some time and every time I adjusted it it would work for a while and then bend a bit further and that would reduce the clutch movement to the point where it was no longer operating and the final straw was when it sheared completely. And you can see that um, some parts of the component have been broken for a period of time 
um, and this trip was the one that uh, caused it to, to fail completely. In the process of trying to fix it, it was like, what can I do? And I couldn't adjust the cable because there were three nuts. One was a nylock and I can get a spanner in to actually adjust it or hold the nuts. And stupidly, I used a um, rattle gun and what that had the effect of doing was to twist the cable, which shortened the length, uh, uh, the length of it quite a lot. And that actually pr provided a massive improvement in drivability. But that's where we end up with a problem where all of a sudden now the cable's too short. So long story short, I got Stephen to go down to the hardware shop in Meriden, which was just about to close, bought some drill bits, and we actually drilled the holes into those two bits of metal and bolted them together. And I was able to, to get the clutch cable into the, um, the, the actuator mechanism again and tighten it up and hey presto, all the way back to Perth, we had beautiful gear changes. Fortunately, I have got a brand new clutch cable sitting at home. So it's a difficult dot job to change, but it's one I'm gonna do and I look forward to driving this now because the, the gears will be so easy to change and that was one of my biggest bugbears was the difficult gear change. Every time I asked for, uh, looked on forums for support, it was always about the linkages. So if you've got a problem with gear changes, check your clutch adjustment. Now onto this tire.